Tonight we're continuing in the consideration of God's Christ miracles, miracles in which the uh, nature and ministry of Christ is revealed. From one point of view, the miracles of Christ, <coughs> as he dwelt among men, it, they, we're beholding his glory. John, the first chapter, verse 14, says to us, The Word is made flesh and dwelt yeah. among us. And we beheld His glory, mm -hmm. the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. There was a particular time when the glory shone in an unusual way, the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. But there were there were other times when his glory showed, and one was his miracles. One of the his first miracle when he turned water into wine, it is said after that that in this miracle Jesus showed forth his glory. And his disciples believed on him. So Christ's glory is his person, is what he's revealing of himself, in other words, not concealed. Now the one we're going to view tonight is the healing of the Syrophoenician's daughter. She's referred to as Syrophoenician in the Mark text. I'm going to actually read the Matthew text, and then we'll uh, we'll cover both of these as we look at this instance. This is the woman who cried after Jesus. You remember the one who said that it's not meat to take. Jesus said it's not meat to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. This is the this is that occasion. I'm reading the account from Matthew 15, verse 21 through 28. <clears throat> then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. <clears throat> My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. And he answered and said, I am not sent, but under the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, <coughs> help me. And he answered and said, It is not right, it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. <clears throat> what a marvelous incident. Amen. I like to deal with the background of these to show you that Jesus, uh, his miracles are wrought in an environment of activity. Mm -hmm. And you will know that it's a few, uh, you will know it's very difficult to shift spiritual gears. It's difficult, for instance, if you've been uh, treading in water in a trial to suddenly leap for joy. But, but Jesus could. And that's sort of what I want you to see here in these backgrounds. That, he didn't always come away from really pleasant circumstances when he did these works. This particular one, Matthew, tells us about it. That Jesus had been teaching and his disciples had come to him and said, Well, don't you know you offended the Pharisees and what you said? They were the ministerial alliance of the day. And, uh, well, I want you to read what he said. Matthew 15, 2, he had told them, Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they eat, wash them not their hands when they eat bread, and then he gives them quite a diatribe against them about what entered in a person didn't defile them. Then in verse 12 of <coughs> Matthew 15, his disciples said unto him, Knowest thou not that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, most have fallen to the ditch. Then Peter said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. 
What did you mean? Every root that plant that hasn't been planted, you root up. He said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do ye not understand that whatsoever entereth into it, the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught? But those things which pro proceed out of the mouth which come forth in the heart, and they which defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things that defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. That was the, you know, he had told, <coughs> told the disciples of what the Pharisees of what they ate, and that's not what defiled you. Mm -hmm. That's the background. Uh, mm -hmm. You can kind of sense the heating up of his spirit. Well, leave him alone. Mm -hmm. stay, stay away from those people. Mm -hmm. Then, that's when our text begins. Jesus went into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. It's Matthew 15, 1 and 21 says. This was an area where Jesus pronounced a woe on. Woe to those of Tyre and Sidon. You know, he pronounced a woe to them because they did not respond appropriately to his ministry. And, he, and then Mark tells us he entered into a house in the area. That's found in Mark 7, 24. He entered into a house. So he's clustered away in a house in the area of the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And he did this because he didn't want men to know where he was. Mark 7, 24 said he would have no man know it. But he could not be hid. Now, I've tried to make a point of this all through these series, that if, if Jesus ever works, the word will get out, and if he's ever around, he cannot be hit. Uh -huh. That's the way it is. That's the way it was when he was in his earthly ministry, and that's the way it is now. You, Jesus can't be hid if he's a place. If he enters into a place on the day of Pentecost in a house, people on the other side of town will hear about it, and they'll gravitate to it. Uh -huh. That's the way Jesus' nature is. He cannot be hid. If he works, it's known. If he's a present, it's known. So that's what happens here. And as he's in the coast of Tyre and Sidon, in a certain house, Mark tells us that this certain woman heard, she heard about Jesus. And she, Mark says she was a woman, a certain woman who had a daughter with an unclean spirit. Now, I've also noticed in these miracles that there are several instances where people, their children were the... The children were the oppressed, and they'd intercede for their children. Mm -hmm. Might be a daughter that died. It might be a. It might be a son that. That is grieved, vexed of a devil. And here was a daughter that was vexed with the devil. But they interceded Christ for their sons. And there's some things, parents, that you really can't do for your children. Mm -hmm. You have to intercede. You have to go to the Savior for them. <coughs> She was a certain woman with a daughter with an unclean spirit. And Mark 7, 25 says, She heard, she heard of Jesus. The words are, she heard of him. What did she hear? Well, we don't know exactly what she heard, but she connected it with her trouble. A proper report of Jesus. You don't have to spell everything out. A proper report of Jesus. People will be able to connect who he is with their particular dilemma. This is one of the great things of the Gospel of Christ. The Gospel of Christ is like a pure message. In this case here it was reports of eyewitnesses. But the Gospel of Christ is a pure witness and if you can deliver this Gospel like it really is and testify of Jesus as he really is, people will make a correlation between who Jesus is and what they need. They will be able to do this. People of faith, they will be able to do this. So she heard about him. And she came and fell at his feet, Mark 7, 30, 25 says, she fell at his feet and worshipped him, which is customary for those people. She was a woman of, of Canaan, the scripture says, <clears throat> Matthew 15, 22. She's a woman of Canaan. She was a member of uh, one of those nations that were to be driven out. She was a member of one of those, Canaanites. She's a woman of Canaan. A remnant of the people that were supposed to be expelled from the land. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? There she is, calling, crying out at him before his feet, the woman of Canaan. So your background doesn't have, really have anything to do with whether you're qualified to come to Jesus or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your background doesn't enter into the picture because all of our backgrounds were, were bad. Yeah. She was a 
Mark 7, 26 says she was a Syrophoenician woman. Mm -hmm. That is a woman of Phoenicia, which is of Syria. She was a, she was a Gentile, in other yeah. words. She was so like Ruth. Yeah. She was that type of person. Or like Rahab, who was mm -hmm. another Gentile woman. So she joined quite an elite class here. <laughs> elite mm -hmm. class of women. So she comes to him, and now uh, let's take a look at the dialogue here. What goes on between uh, the Lord Jesus and this woman who come out of Canaan, came to him. You notice that in a lot of these texts, <laughs> the people made an extended effort to come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're going to see in this instance here that Jesus came to her and she came to him, both of them. Mm -hmm. What you're going to see is he came into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he performed this work, and he left. Mm -hmm. Which means that's, this is why he came into this area. He came uh -huh. into this area mm -hmm. for this woman's sake, for one person's sake, just like the Gadarene demonian. Mm -hmm. For one person's sake, he came into this area. So I'll tell you, that's, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a marvelous picture. Mm -hmm. Well, the Word of God tells us that she cried out to him with a, a discerning call. Yeah. Matthew 15, 22 says, She cried out, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou Son of David. It's a Gentile now mm -hmm. calling this out. She knows that he gives mercy. She knows that he's Lord. She knows she's son of David. That's a, mm -hmm. There are some people today who don't know this. Mm -hmm. That are like in the church and that don't know this. This, this is remarkable cry. See, when you come to the Lord, you must make your plea upon the basis of who he is, mm -hmm. not who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great secret Amen. to effectual to effectual prayer. And she had a daughter that was vexed of a devil. Mark 7, 26 says she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. I wondered how that must have sounded. This would be probably something that a lot of people wouldn't say, but when you come to Jesus, you're in his presence. As to how it sounds isn't that important. You want to make your plea, your case. She besought him. Pled for him. The word that we're going to see indicates she's doing it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. She just didn't come and make one request. If she had sat under some preachers that I've heard, she would have heard something like this. Uh, repeated requests are a sign of unbelief. Just make your request and, and just make it what once and that's sufficient. The Lord, you don't have to tell the Lord over and over and over. Well, she wouldn't have prayed like this. She's doing this over and over, following Jesus beseeching him to cast the demon out of her child and making an appeal to him as a Lord who gives mercy and is the son of David. Mm -hmm. And the scripture very carefully tells us in Matthew 15, 23, he answered her, not a word. Mm -hmm. Not a word. Yeah. You get the picture, he's walking along and she's behind and he just, if you're looking at the circumstances, you'd think, well, this probably is an irritant to the, to the Lord. That's why his disciples are going to come to him and ask him to tell her to be quiet. They fortunately, in this case, they did. They didn't do it. They were going to. They ask him to. Uh, it may seem from time to time when you come to the Lord <laughs> that you believe you need immediate attention. This lady need, felt she needed immediate attention. We don't know how that long this daughter had been in this condition, but it, it was a grievous condition. Uh, Jesus didn't answer. He didn't treat this as a crisis. Mm -hmm. Now, I have seen uh, kind of the border of the garment of this truth that I'm going to tell you, so to speak. But if you treat things like a crisis, if that's really how you treat them, then it's possible that you've overstated the case. Mm -hmm. a, you've, got, you've got to see this from a certain angle, understand. Mm -hmm. From a standpoint of the flesh, it is a crisis. This woman's right. occasion was a crisis. Serious crisis. As a child that was vexed of a devil, whether she went into convulsions and into fire and water like another son of a man did, we don't know how this was how this was affecting her. But it was a crisis. But Jesus, he doesn't treat things as crises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's in the only thing that's a crisis is what you can't control, and there isn't anything like this for Jesus. Mm -hmm. So there really are no crises for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And somehow, when you come to Christ in faith, you, your faith has to get hold of this. Mm -hmm. That Jesus doesn't treat things like crises. Mm -hmm. And so he answers her not a word. And his disciples, <laughs> they, they're irritated by this. A lot of times what the disciples told Jesus to do is just, he took, 
or told the people to, they, it was completely out of order. They told Bartimaeus, don't cry out. They told the mothers, don't bring your children, you know. And, to, and here they tell Jesus, tell her to, to not go away. And we're on our way to some kind of ministry. We don't know what it is, but this woman is an irritant to us. And then notice what they said. She crieth after us. Uh -huh. Well, she really wasn't crying after them. She was crying after Jesus. Right. And when people solicit your prayers and your assistance in the Lord, you've got to see it like they're not really crying after us. No. They're really crying after Christ. So they're no. going to someone who knows Christ, see? you got to see it this way, because otherwise you tend to kind of overstate your own personal value. Well, Jesus responds in the hearing of this woman. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, some theologians would argue with Jesus on this. Mm -hmm. It was he came to seek and save the lost. Jesus narrowed it down of Israel. <laughs> this is Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, his earthly ministry really wasn't for the purpose of reaching the Gentiles. It really wasn't. Mm -hmm. Even though he did, it's not, a, uh -huh. it's not a pure mercy, but that wasn't the focus of his ministry. He came to his own. Uh -huh. That's who he came. He was sent into the world to his own people. Uh -huh. It was like a technicality, kingdom tech technicality, but the gospel could not come to us until they rejected. Yeah, yeah, amen. You're to the Jew first. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the kingdom criteria. But see, his heart's made known here mm -hmm. that that didn't mean it was just limited to them. But he he cites this technicality as sort of a test of faith. Mm -hmm. A person of unbelief would say, "Well, if that's the case, then I'm out of order." Mm -hmm. But uh, that's not what this woman said. Instead, she said she came to him and she worshipped him. Mark 15, 24, she, after he answered, I'm not sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Oh, this is a little modification of the original request. The original request was, my daughter's vexed of a devil. Now she says, help me. Help me. This, uh, this is part of me that I'm praying about. And uh, you would think that Jesus would say there, that's very wonderful, that's what I'll do. But he said, no, he said, uh, Mark 7, 27, let the children first be filled. Mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. Even though I'm in this coast of Tyre and said, let the children first be filled. <laughs> it's a test of faith, you've got to see this. He did not say, I'm going to fill only the children first. He said, let you, let you be willing to be second. Mm -hmm. You be willing to take a back seat. You be willing to wait. Mm -hmm. And we're going to find the woman was willing. Mm -hmm. She was willing to do this. And then he made this statement that has been a discussion of much, uh, much import. <clears throat> Matthew 15, 26, it's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Mm -hmm. Mark 7, 25 said, it's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. Mm -hmm. It's not proper. This is not proper. You could take the Bible and show that this is not proper. Mm -hmm. You could show that the Gentiles, they stooped, they, they fell far away from God. They were overcome with their own sin. They were given over. They were given over to lust to do it greed, things greedily and sins greedily. They worship the cre creature rather than the creator. So it's not it's not proper mm -hmm. to take these gems of mercy. The mercy. Some people say healing <coughs> is the children's bread, but she didn't ask for healing. She asked for mercy. Uh -huh. It's mercy is the children's bread. Uh -huh. And to have mercy on someone is in spite of their condition to lavish this great divine power and tenderness upon them. Mm -hmm. So he says it's not, not appropriate to do this. But the woman's not trapped by technicalities. See, a lot, of, a lot of people today are trapped by kingdom technicalities. They don't know how to handle technicalities. Mm -hmm. They'll read things in Scripture like, uh, like uh, some of whom we're familiar, they will say, well, sing, make a melody in your heart to the Lord. And they'll say, well, that means you can't use an instrument. You know, mm -hmm. and they'll go to some kind of a technicality. Mm -hmm. But the, Jesus will say things to you so it'll, it'll trap unbelief. It'll make unbelief react in, a, in sort of a stupid way. Mm -hmm. But this woman doesn't react in unbelief. Mm -hmm. She reacts in faith. 
she says, truth. <laughs> truth, this is the truth. So I'm not coming on this technicality here. Truth. I'm not, I'm not willing for the children not to be fed. I'm not asking you not feed the children. But even the dogs, they get the crumbs from the table. So I'm just let me get near enough to get what they waste. <laughs> Even though Jesus, he, even the crumbs, he gathers them up, you know. None, none of the crumbs stay under the table. He gathers them up. Matthew 15 says, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their, their master's table. Is it just said, their master's table? And Mark said, she answered, Yes, Lord, yes, yes. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. They're the children's crumbs. I admit this. Well, she's come to the Lord in truth. She's acknowledged the truth. She's asked for mercy, not for merit. She doesn't know why Jesus has come to Tyre and Sidon. Actually, he has come here for her. That's actually why he came here. She doesn't know this. So, but God, Jesus draws it, draws it out of her. <laughs> If you can see this, sometimes delays draw good things up. Amen. Sometimes they make God's people reassess, well, how am I, what, what am I here for? Help me! You know, kind of re, kind of re, let me restate the case. Help me! <laughs> or maybe, I'm, yes, I, I'm undeserving. Yes, I... See, she didn't say all this at first. Mm -hmm. But his delay brought this out. I'm undeserving. I'm, I'm in this dog category. Mm -hmm. I'm in this. What I'm asking for is, is crumbs. This really... <laughs> It is like a crumb. I understand that, but yeah, she restated the case. How's Jesus going to respond to something like this? I wonder what the disciples, how they would have responded. Fortunately, in this case, it's not detailed for us. Jesus said to her, A woman, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as Thou wilt. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, well, I'll go, where, you, where do you live? I'll go with you. That's what he did with Jairus. He just got through doing this with Jairus. He said, I'll go with you. He didn't even he didn't say that. She doesn't say, don't come. Mm -hmm. Like Jairus later said, or like the centurion said. She doesn't say that. He just, right from the spot, says, your, uh, your faith, great is it. Be it unto you as you, as you said. And then there's a, something additional added here by the uh, by Mark. Mark says, "For this saying, mm -hmm. go thy way; the devil is gone out of thy daughter." For this saying, now the centurion, his faith, it was a saying that he had too. The centurion, he had a saying. Mm -hmm. When he said, "Just speak a word, and, and you, and it will happen," because I'm a man of authority, under authority, and whatever I say happens, and you, you can do the same. It was a saying, mm -hmm. and Jesus said to this woman, He said, "For this saying, go thy way; the devil's going out of thy daughter." Now, we live in a time when sayings are very <laughs> loose. Speech has become very loose, but here, this woman, mercy depended on the way she said it. Mm -hmm what she said for thy saying what was the saying the saying was that do the dogs eat the crumbs under the table yeah so we're, we're not asking to be able to sit up at the table and have any priority here mm -hmm. that was her saying but it was a discerning saying mm -hmm. she wasn't wrong in what she said she was right in what she said technically she was right mm -hmm. but see god he's driven by generalities sometimes that the poor people who need mercy get the mercy, but, they, but they've got to see they need it. Yes. This woman mm -hmm. saw it, and his own people didn't. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So actually, he really, in a technical sense of the word, didn't give her crumbs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Now, what, what were the effects of this, uh, of this whole event? Well, Matthew says the daughter was made whole from that very hour. Mm -hmm. Mark takes it a little further. He said when she was come to her house, she found the daughter, found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. So she was like in a state of recuperation, I guess. 
being weary, the devil demon in her must have wore her out, wore the daughter out, and she is laying upon her bed. And then the next thing we read is it's Matthew 15, 29, then and Jesus departed from thence. He just got there and he left. Mark says, and again, departing from their coasts, from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. So that's, that's sort of the miracle, a summation of it. Jesus comes into this area that is known for rejecting him. <laughs> this woman comes out of Canaan, a Syrophoenician, a Gentile. She, because she heard about him, mm -hmm. she pursues him. She asks him to heal her daughter. He doesn't answer her. She revises her approach. She comes to him, falls down, and worships him, and says, "Help me." And uh, Jesus tells her, "Well, I'm only sent to Israel, lost well, sheep of the children of Israel. It's not proper. People that want to go by the proper procedure all the time. This is," he says, "It's not proper to give uh -huh. the children's uh, bread to dogs." She says, "Truth." But the dogs do eat the crumbs under the table, so there is a provision made for the... There is a provision for the dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, there is. And for the saying, the child was healed. I want to make several observations about this... about this whole incident. That Remember, we're seeing Christ's glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus, as with the gathering demonic, went out of his way to come to this woman. Mm -hmm. If you read the text, it sounds like she came to him. But he actually went to her. You know, it says in Scripture, I am come to seek and save that which is lost. He's mm -hmm. seeking here. Mm -hmm. Right. That's one of the Christ's traits. Christ will get where the people are that want him. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You've got to believe this. See, there is a sort of a misconception that's afoot in the church that, that the hot and top over there need Christ, but if we don't go to them, they won't hear him. And there's a, I understand there's a sense in which that's true, but that's not the whole truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. The whole truth of the matter is Jesus did come to seek, and it is him that's doing the seeking. And if your people get close enough to uh -huh. him, like Philip did, he'll send them out into yes. that desert to talk to that Ethiopian. Amen. Man. So Jesus does find those that are seeking him. And I, yeah. this my persuasion, there's more people seeking him than we probably think. Mm -hmm. And everything really starts with hearing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she heard about it. Everything starts with that. Hearing, there's got to be something said mm -hmm. about the Lord Jesus. Yeah. To solicit the attention of the heart. It's not enough just to see what he did. It's got to be said. She heard about him. Faith comes by hearing. Here's an actual example of it. The marvel is not that, uh, incidentally, that Jesus does not hear men. It looks like this maybe is not proper. He didn't answer a word. And mm -hmm. The particularly emotional person might find fault with this and say, well, that's not very polite. Have this woman calling after you and you just ignore her. But the marvel isn't that he ignores men. The marvel is that he hears men. Uh -huh. You've got to see it's just Amen. actually just the opposite. Amen. Which one of us doesn't know that it's a marvel that he accepted us and heard us and watched mm -hmm. us? That's the marvel. Yeah. It isn't that he hasn't done it for him or her or them. That isn't the marvel. The marvel is that we're in it all. That's mm -hmm. the marvel. Mm -hmm. And divine priorities are not always in sequence. <laughs> You would think, well, now the main thing now is to get to that woman and heal that woman's daughter. But see, it doesn't, it doesn't look like that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like that. It, he goes to Tyre and Sidon, and he walks and ignores the woman. And it, you can't just go by steps, so mm -hmm. to speak. There's not always a divine order. Jesus doesn't always ignore those who call out to him. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's kind of rare that he did this. He did this to Bartimaeus and to this woman, but most of the people, he talked to them on the first, the first try. Mm -hmm. So this is not his ordinary manner. But, but from time to time it is, and you may have experienced this manner mm -hmm. yourself. You may, maybe you are now experiencing this manner. Maybe you're beseeching the Lord about something, and it seems like he's not answering. Well, it's, he's not, it's not that he's not answering, he's trying, mm -hmm. testing the tinsel of your faith, to see maybe how serious you are about this. Maybe you'll faint and give up and not pray always, see? 
Maybe the situation is, is, isn't as bad as you think, or maybe it's worse than you think. You may see, it's not that he's just not answering. There's a testing going on here. Yes. So what you learn from these people, not to give up, Amen. not to quit, not to misinterpret the silence of the Savior. The silence of the master doesn't mean he's not interested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You'll hear people say, well, if God loves us so much, why, you know, mm -hmm. if God really cares, why did this tsunami wave happen? Or what? Mm -hmm. They assume that he's disinterested and assume he doesn't love, don't assume it, just assume he's waiting to be gracious, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Isaiah said. Another thing you learn in this is strong faith is designed to bring out Strong language is designed to bring out strong faith. Sometimes Jesus speaks rather sharply. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, you've got no right to call me a dog when we've got equal rights here. Mm -hmm. What, are you prejudiced against women or prejudiced against Gentiles? Or why do you speak to me after this manner? That's how some people would respond to this. Yeah. Well, when Jesus speaks sharply to you, it's like a surgeon who's who's preparing for surgery, and it may, what he does may hurt at first, but it won't at last. Mm -hmm. So be patient in situations like this. And faith, persistent faith, will obtain the blessing. Mm -hmm. It may be a long time coming, but don't, inter don't interpret a long time coming as though you were very weak in faith and you didn't phrase the prayer right and you mm -hmm. didn't approach it right and your life wasn't pure enough. And don't interpret it that way. Interpret that he's waiting mm -hmm. to be gracious. There's a proper time for the thing to happen. And a feeling of superiority must not accompany our request. Mm -hmm. When the Lord says you're a nobody, say truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Truth. Amen. You're a Gentile. You were not a people. Say truth, mm -hmm. truth. You did not obtain mercy, truth. Yes. Truth, Lord, truth. Yeah. Just acknowledge that what we were the when we started yes. out. Yeah. We really didn't have anything to offer. That's that right. That is the truth. And a proper assessment of the problem adds weight to your prayer. Now she didn't come and say, my daughter has fits. Or my daughter is an epileptic or whatever. She assessed my daughter's vexed with the devil. Mm -hmm. Apparently was a proper assessment because Jesus said the devil's gone out of your daughter. Yeah. And so it was a proper assessment. Sometimes it hurts you to have to admit what the real case is. Yeah. Maybe we'd rather say that credit, credit it to something else, but sometimes it's humiliating, but you have to admit the devil's done this. Mm -hmm. The devil's working uh -huh. in my children. That's about that's kind of hard to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. I can speak as one that has had to acknowledge things mm -hmm. like that. You just have to admit it, what it is, properly assess it, and then they say, "I need help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not adequate to this situation." And faith is convinced that Christ is not only able, but it, that He's inclined. She yeah. would never have continued this if she didn't wasn't convinced. Christ was able to do this thing that she's asking, and he was deep down inclined to this. Yeah. Otherwise, she'd have never said, truth, Lord, but, but the dogs eat the crumbs under the, under the children's table. She'd have never said that. Mm -hmm. But she didn't, in her heart, sense that Christ was able and inclined. You must, you must, this is the thing you have to work at. Mm -hmm. This woman didn't, wasn't exposed to a whole lot about Jesus. Nothing compared to her works. Uh -huh. You, if this uh, Syrophoenician woman could sit down with us, she would be astounded mm -hmm. at how much we know about the Lord Jesus Amen. Mm -hmm. compared to what she knew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if what she knew moved her to do this, which I would think she would say, you must be really receiving a lot from Jesus uh -huh. having known all that you know about him and, right. and hear that the church is marveling at what she received. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's kind of it, isn't it? Yes. Anything from Jesus must be seen as a benefit, mm -hmm. even if it's crumbs. <laughs> you can live off of Jesus crumbs. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, they're, they're nourishing and good. So she didn't despise crumbs. She didn't ask for a whole loaf. And sometimes what we say is what brings the blessing. By the same token, sometimes what we say withholds the blessing. That's what we say. 
Sometimes those fast words and fast responses, like people say, if God cared, he must not care, or why doesn't he love me more, how come this happened to me? See, sometimes those sayings mm -hmm. shut the spigot yeah. off. Just That must be the case, or other, otherwise this would have no significance. If it wasn't true that you're saying, open the blessing, yeah. if that wasn't true, if that is true, then it's also true that there are sayings that shut off the spigot. Uh -huh. Unbelief, oh, let it not penetrate into our speech. It is important to say the right things. Ask God to help you to properly assess what you're praying about and to properly ask for it. Mm -hmm. And if what you need is mercy, call it mercy. Don't bark an order to the Lord like what you need, what you have is a crisis and you aren't going to be any better unless this crisis is served and please use your power and correct it. Appeal to his mercy. Amen. That's what that's what he's moved to do. Because we are creatures that need mercy. One other thing that when you examine what Jesus says, even if it hurts, it is the truth. Yes. Amen. It is the truth. If you if you in the recesses of your heart you've sought the Lord for this or for that, prayed to him, and the answer seems to be a bit long in coming, and you sense in his heart he may say to you, you haven't been giving your best to me. You've been kind of dragging your feet. You should say, this is the truth. Mm -hmm. This is the truth. You've kind of been tired and responded to me. Hmm? I called unto you and you didn't answer me as quickly as you want me to answer you. You should say, I'm telling you, he will speak to you like this. Mm -hmm. You should say, this is the truth. Mm -hmm. This is the truth. <laughs> you should have, by reason of time, you should have been a teacher. And you've got, someone's got to feed you spiritual baby food yet. You say, true, this is the truth. This is the truth. What will it do? It will awaken his mercy. That's what it will do. It will awaken his mercy. You should have understood that a man saved by faith and not by works. Of all people, you should have known the truth. This is truth. This is the truth, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it will unlock the blessings of heaven for you. Well, this, uh, this occasion of the Syrophoenician woman, an unnamed person again. You've got another one of these anonymous people. But now for at least 2,000 years, this woman's been bearing fruit mm -hmm. yes. in God's kingdom been bearing fruit and everybody of insight that reads this woman's case is benefited by it. So if you think you're too low to be blessed, think of the five Syrophoenician woman. Think about her. If you think, well, I don't know what to say, I can't present an eloquent case, think of the Syrophoenician woman. Mm -hmm. If you think, well, the answer's a bit slow in coming, think of the Syrophoenician woman. If you need to make a response to the Lord, you're not quite sure how to respond, at least start your response by saying what you said was right, Lord. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. And then seek for some godly characteristic, some holy characteristic mm -hmm. that you can plead like a chew. the dogs can't eat the crumbs. Mm -hmm. Get hold of something that you know is the truth about God and plead that.